Joel Richardson is an outspoken voice urging Christians to support Israel. And he joins us now. And Joel, welcome, welcome to the show. Gordon, good to be with you. Um, what do you say about the current movement um, to boycott, divest, sanction Israel? Um, why, why is that? Why are Christians turning to that? It seems astounding to me, but why are they doing it? You know, the, uh, the boycott, divestment, sanctions is a movement that began with, I mean, rabid, racist, pro Palestinian activists but they have couched it as this sort of grassroots college movement that's founded on justice and compassion. And they've done a really good job with the propaganda narrative, you know? And so a lot of these young Christians, they think they're getting involved. The Lord cares about justice and compassion, but they've really um, perverted those values. And, and as a result of that, you've got a lot of Christians that are putting their, their boats, if you will, into this, this river which ultimately leads to the nation of Israel being surrounded by nations which want to destroy her. And that's literally what it's leading to. Well, I see, I see it as a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. What I don't understand is how can the very elect be deceived by it? And, and I'm seeing even, even denominations get on board and saying our pension funds, our investments, are, aren't going to be in Israel. Is there a theological underpinning to it? And, and, and what do you call that? Absolutely. I mean, and this is the thing, is to say, how could Christians get involved in something which is so uh, contrary to the Word of God and the heart of God? But when you look at the history of the Christian church, overwhelmingly, the church taught replacement theology. This idea that the church has replaced Israel and God is done with Israel. He's dissolving the people of Israel. So once you begin with that theology, then the fact that Israel is a nation reestablished, prospering, it becomes a huge thorn in the side of your theology. And so rather than, uh, you know, is essentially they're forced to sort of undermine Israel politically. And so it's political, it's Political criticism and undermining of Israel is a way to support their flawed theology. Well, let's turn to the Bible. I mean, you've got a wonderful book out, When a, when a Jew Rules the World, where you do just that. Uh, I joke that the longer I'm a Christian, the more Jewish I become. Uh, and I, I, I really understand what Paul was talking about, the one new man, and how the Gentiles are literally grafted into the, the tree of Judaism. For me, growing up, and I grew up Baptist, uh, you know, we, we tried to make a lot out of, you know, the Gospel of Luke as, you know, here's the one Gentile. And even that now turns out in my research, that's not even true, that he probably was Jewish. And so you, when you look at the New Testament, even, even in that, all the authors are Jewish. Uh, it, and you just, for me, now I can't get away from it, but we seem to have gotten away from that. You know, this was the biggest warning that Paul the Apostle made to Gentile believers. He said, listen, you guys, know your place. He says, before you were introduced to the God of Israel, to Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, you were a Gentile. You were a pagan. You were without hope, without God in the world. And this was our place. And then he says, but now by grace you've been grafted in, as you said, to the tree of Israel. And he says, but just because you've been grafted in by grace, don't you become arrogant. Don't you look down on those that were broken off in order that you, you know, you, 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 you blind Gentile could come in. And yet, unfortunately, Gentile arrogance is what has dominated much of the church down through history. And there's this great movement in the late 1800s or early 1800s, the Plymouth Brethren Movement. Mm -hmm. And that's changed the face of the theological face of the church. And much of the church now supports Israel, stands with Israel, understands the ongoing calling and election of Israel. But now in recent years, there's been this trend back to embrace replacement theology. And it's a dangerous trend and it needs to be confronted vigorously. Well, what was it about America? Because you look at, at the history of that, it's primarily American voices, Ezra Stiles, uh, even one of the ancestors of the, the Bush, Bushes uh, uh, was, was writing about the restoration of Israel. And only through the restoration of a Jewish nation in Israel could you see actual fulfillment of the biblical prophecies. What was it about America that, was, that allowed that? 
You know, the United States was founded, people say it was founded on Judeo-Christian principles, and that's true in a general sense. And then you could say, and even more specifically, it was founded on Christian principles. But ultimately, in, a, in the most specific sense, it was founded on Protestant Christian principles. It really was. And so with this movement in the early 1800s, the Plymouth Brethren Movement, there was a return to embrace a more literal face value uh, hermeneutic approach to interpreting the scriptures. Once you read the Bible for what it says, mm -hmm. then it becomes clear that in the last days, Israel would be reestablished in the land as a nation. You had numerous guys back then that saw it, declared that it would happen hundreds of years before it happened, and it has happened. And they weren't prophets, they were simply reading the scriptures. What, what can Christians do to get more involved in this? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to be informed, but you know, when, when you see the boycott divestment sanctions going on, what should you do? Well, we need to resist it. And, you know, when it's creeping into the denominations, as it has, we've seen some of the major denominations, uh, you know, putting out statements that are, that are vehemently anti-Israel. I mean, that are really uh, almost, uh, almost fomenting people to violence, some of it. I mean, it's really, just really gross stuff. And I won't say which denominations, but... When you see these things creeping in, if you're part of a denomination, then stand against it. Politically, stand against it. There are groups that are engaged in that political activism side of things. But, but you know, and that's important. But let me just say this, that beyond the political activism side, first and foremost, our stand with Israel has to be gospel-centered. So we need to stand against the propaganda and the lies that are coming against Israel. But at the heart of it, our support has to be much deeper and spiritual. We need to be calling the Jewish people back to the God of Israel, back to their Messiah. Uh, you know, it's the, it's the Jewish Messiah that brought us into this relationship with them, and that's our, our duty. It's our mandate is to bring them back to him as well. What would you say to people, and, and I've, I've actually heard this, who understand biblical prophecy, understand the importance of Israel in fulfillment, but at the same time say, let this other thing happen because that's prophesied as well. Uh, at one point, all the nations are going to gather. Uh, so let them do it. Uh, why, why hinder it? Right. Yeah. Fatalism is the greatest uh, pitfall of those that study biblical prophecy. The Lord wants us to, there are certain things that will take place, but he doesn't want us to participate and to capitulate, and he doesn't want us to sit back and passively allow it to happen. Because it, this is sort of that weird dimension where is it Satan or is it God? Well, Satan will, will you know, stir up the nations against Israel, and the Lord will allow it to happen, but we are to resist it. We are to stand against the activity of Satan. And so, you know, sort of this passivity, well, the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket. Why polish the brass on a sinking ship? Why bother? The, that, I, in my opinion, the Lord will judge those who take that passive attitude. He wants us engaged, and he wants us on his side. His ultimate purpose is redemption, not destruction. Yeah, their blood will be on our hands if we don't warn them of the coming destruction. Right. Uh, and don't warn them that they're in danger of being cut off uh, yeah. if they go along with this. Right. Yep. Well, thank you for the book. Thank you for the wisdom. Thanks for the insight. If you want to mo know more about this, when a Jew rules the world, how, how to interpret biblical prophecy, uh, how to really understand what the Bible says about Israel and the plan of God. This book is available wherever books are sold. We'll be back with more of 700 Club Interactive right after this.